displacement and forced removal that has profoundly impacted indigenous communities. We commit to understanding and acknowledging the ongoing effort effects of this history and to actively support the, so the sovereignty and self-determination of indigenous peoples. Today, we express gratitude to the local Indians for their continued connection to the land and their contributions to our shared community. We commit to listening, learning, and partnering in solidarity with these and other indigenous nations to foster healing, justice, and rec reconciliation. May we honor the land, its original inhabitants, and their enduring legacy as we strive to build relationships of respect, understanding, and collaboration. Let's salute the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Do we have any agenda, additions, or corrections, advocate? No, Mayor, we do not. Thanks. Next comes business from the audience. We have Heidi and Peter signed up. Please come on up. Uh, there's a red circle that you want to touch and make turn green. You're doing just right. There you go. Voila. And if you could, you know, give us a three minutes or so. Okay. Thanks for coming, Heidi. Stop me at three minutes if I go over, but I probably won't because I was in Toastmasters. Right. I am I'm Heidi Venture. I'm the co-owner of Vital Reset, which is Hood River's first psilocybin service center. And somebody asked me to come and give an update. So here I am. We have been building a bathroom in this in the one building that we could find in Hood River to rent for the last two months and we put up the toilet paper holder today. So we've we have applied for our license with the state. We're waiting for OHA. We've done our fingerprints. I've gone to facilitation school and graduated, of course, magna cum laude, like I always do. So, uh, and there are at least three other people in Hood River who have graduated from facilitation school and we hope to employ them. We're currently looking at how are we going to serve people who can't afford the ridiculous amount that this service is going to cost? So we have some ideas around doing group sessions and accepting donations from people who have more than enough to help people who don't have much. We've got about 150 people on the waiting list. Wow. Uh, and I haven't even uh, tried to get people on the waiting list. So that is how big the demand is for what people want. Most of it is healing. Most people are wanting healing from PTSD and depression and anxiety. We're also going to be offering some self-exploration journeys and problem solving. One of the things people don't know about psychedelics is that in the 60s, there was a big movement to use them for problem solving. And there is a rumor, don't know if it's true, that the computer chip came out of one of those problem solving sessions. So I'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but it does show that you can make some progress on a problem you haven't been able to solve. So that's what's happening. Our location is at 1020 Wasco Street, Suite J. We're not a walk-in place. You can't come buy mushrooms from us. You can come and have a facilitator lead you through a process that leads to you having a session with the mushrooms and integrating what you learn from that session. When would you guess will be the first available appointment, Heidi? I, I keep putting it out a month because we're waiting to hear from OHA, but July? I'm hoping for July. I don't have any control over it. Thanks for the update. So that's what's happening. So we're upstairs from um, Fresh Cider and New York City Sub Shop, which pretty much everybody knows where that is. Apparently, I had no idea. That place is busy all the time. And the smell, you know? We've got really interesting smells that we've had to block out. Um, yeah. And we're working on our business, like how to deal with the taxes. Did you know you don't get to get any deductions if you're trafficking a federally controlled substance? Yeah. Yeah. So we're working on that. There's just lots to do. It's very exciting. I'm enjoying myself a great deal and looking forward to be, being part of people getting some healing, like I did from the mushrooms. Thank, so you. thank you all so much. Peter. Hello, uh, Peter Cornelis, and I live at 1003 Fifth Street, um, Fifth and June in the Heights. And I've got two topics. Uh, first one is um, Streets Alive. Uh, Thrive and Streets Alive are going to team up to do a smaller version of the event we did in 2018. Um, I think you've got a page that describes the route, yes. 
And we'd love to uh, encourage you to come out, uh, participate. And if you have any uh, ideas of fun things that we can do on those blocks, please let us know. We're having weekly planning meetings, but this is it's kind of a quicker version of, of uh, just what we did in 2018, as I said. Um, we're gonna have a, a DJ, um, Zumba, two Zumba instructors actually, live music, street art, uh, with uh, um, art in the schools, um, helping out a bike tune-up station and a dog parade. We're gonna have a contest for the hairiest dog in Red River. <laughs> and maybe the smallest, I don't know, to be decided. Um, but one important thing is we're, we're kind of trying to bring awareness to, to Wilson and A Street as the city signed bike route through 12th and 13th. Um, and I don't know if you noticed, but ODOT just recently um, replaced all the, like the things that go on the street, they upgraded. Um, put new ones uh, on 12th and 13th Street. So the the crosswalks are looking better than ever. Um, and the, we're going to pay the city approximately $600 for permits. If the city wanted to help out with that, um, you know, I'll, I'll leave that up to you, but um, we could discuss that at council call. Um, and we'd be glad to to, have, to, to list the city as one of the sponsors, um, if you want to do that. Uh, so that's uh, Streets Alive. The second thing is much quicker. Are, are there any questions regarding that? The second thing is it's much quicker. I was walking on the new section of the Indian Creek Trail, the one that goes further south. Um, some of you have probably done that, but if you haven't, I encourage you to. The park district is really stepping up. They've they've added a lot of gravel, uh, raised boardwalks in, in soggy places. Um, but on the city's property, there's some scotch broom. Uh, I indicated it here. It's at Elliott Park. Um, and that stuff is quite invasive. It spreads. Um, and a friend and I pulled some of it, but uh, um, this, this, the city needs, or somebody needs to get in there and deal with it, so it doesn't spread down into, um, you know, lower, lower in the park. Thanks for letting us know about that. That's really valuable. Yeah, yeah. And this, this point, I, I don't. Does somebody know how to pronounce that? Su, Susla Point. Really beautiful. Yeah, worth the worth the trip. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. Yeah. Now we're moving on, moving on to presentations. We have a, a presentation from Kat. I just want to provide some context by I can distribute those up. Thanks. Uh, by just saying, uh, Kat had come. Amy had asked for a um, match, a great match. We talked about this during the budget meeting and asked if uh, Amy could come and give just a little bit more information. So I just wanna thank Amy, who I think I called on Thursday or Friday and uh, her willingness to come kind of at the last minute. So um, I will pass these out, thanks. Yeah, thank you. Uh, and I just threw a quick little something together to just give you a good idea of kind of the, the grant as a whole and what we're trying to do. Um, we are still finalizing our grant, so please keep that in mind as you are, are looking at this and listening to me uh, speak. So the, the total, this is for the carbon reduction program through ODOT. Uh, we'll be asking for a total of about $800,000. Uh, the intent is to uh, start implementation of our transit master plan, uh, specifically by providing additional uh, tools in uh, our toolbox here in Hood River uh, for transportation. So we're looking at e-bike lending library, which would be roughly about 160,000 and the match would be 16,000. Uh, so that will include part-time management, traditional e-bikes, cargo e-bikes, bike trailers, helmets, uh, a fixed location that will be staffed and can assist with education on how to use the bikes, as well as uh, writing and uh, rules of the road and et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and they can be checked up to a week at a time. Um, so again, we're still finalizing that. 
And then we also have an e-bike or an e-bike rebate project, uh, which is the intent is to assist low-income individuals who might not have the opportunity otherwise to, um, well, first try an e-bike through the lending library and then uh, purchasing their own. Um, and this would assist with that. Um, and then also there would be a car sharing com component, which would uh, kind of be a second iteration of the current fourth cruise car sharing project. Uh, we're looking at a kind of hub model where there would be two vehicles at each location. Uh, and uh, there'd be six vehicles uh, and there's a potential grant from Pacific Power that would cover the match for that program. So that would be amazing. Uh, and then of course, marketing, any type of big project like this, we're gonna need a very comprehensive marketing uh, plan in order to ensure that folks know all the different transportation options that are available to them and how they can use them. Uh, so we are asking, or have asked the city for uh, assistance with the match for the e-bike lending library and e-bike rebate programs. Um, however, I'm also asking for a support letter for the whole kit and caboodle. Uh, we are focusing on the city of Hood River with this application with the intent of expanding it to the Upper Valley and Cascade Locks uh, after we get our kind of feet on, under us and, and understand all the different things. Great, thank you. Yeah. Questions for Amy? Amy? I have a Did question. I miss the, when, when would we see these good things on the ground? No, you did not. Oh. Uh, so the awarding of this grant, we are expecting it, uh, I believe, uh, the end of the year. So end of the calendar year. So probably November-ish. And then assuming that we would actually be obligated the funds around March, April of 2024. Uh, so we would just be doing uh, that initial project management uh, for the fiscal year 2024, but in fiscal year 2025, uh, that's when we would really do all the things. Yeah. Other questions? I have a question. Go ahead, Gladys. Hi, Amy. Thanks for being here today. Exciting stuff. Uh, I was curious, have you been in contact with our local CCO, our care coordinated, coordinated organization, Pacific Source? Um, they could potentially have the ability to uh, financially support these efforts specifically for their patients here within Hood River. Just curious. I have not on this specific thing. We have worked with them on some of our other projects, uh, but not with this specifically. Uh, and I'll, so I'll do that. I'll put that on my radar. Thank you. Another thing is that we are, and I've, I've talked to One Community Health on this, but we have not kind of gone down the road too far but we brainstormed that potentially one community health or around it uh, could be a great spot for the, the car sharing uh, place. I was hoping to also put uh, one of the e-bike lending libraries there, but I think logistically that would be too difficult. Uh, but one community health has been a wonderful partner and our bus stop there um, has just, the, the ridership is amazing. So I think having those options, those tools in that region would be awesome. So. Abigail, as the fourth project is kind of winding down, yeah. remember there was a question about perhaps we would get to keep the chargers. Has anything been finalized on that? I don't think so. I think uh, when we looked at this, the, we have one at the fire station. I don't think we're looking to keep that one because that's not really a public lot. Uh, there's one at the waterfront, uh, and, and that is um, port property, yeah. not ours. And then I think there's one at a... Um, so uh, yes, there's one by the Columbia lot. That is the only one that is ours, and I think we're still in the conversation. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Oh. Yeah, thanks, Amy. Uh, super excited to see this. Uh, um, when it comes to the e-bike uh, lending library, et cetera, um, are there other cities that have had success with this? And uh, I guess two-part question, what, what kind of bikes, et cetera, can we expect to see? Uh, I've got an e-cargo bike and I know there's a huge barrier for people to get access to these kinds of things and try them out. And so just kind of wanted to get ahead of it and see uh, maybe what kind of models are and start letting people know uh, yes. what it's about. So um, obviously it'll, which specific ones we get would kind of depend on uh, the funds when we get them and, and what's available at that at the moment in time. And because of the dollar amount, there would be a procurement process. Um, but 
we are looking at cargo bikes as well as traditional. Um, and the intent is that we would be getting uh, electric bikes that can handle the hills. So I know that there are some that the, the motors can't handle the hills as well as others. Yeah, mine can handle the, the <laughs> so, <laughs> came from the Netherlands though. So they don't have, uh, you know, so, yeah. just like this, so. So the intent would be to make sure that they could uh, withstand the wear and tear in this region. Um, and the, your first question of, has this been done in other places? Yes, it looks very different in different places. I'm sorry, I don't have a city off the top of my head. Um, but there are communities, I think Denver, um, that does it actually at a library. Mm. Um, and you can get bike trailers and uh, things like that. So uh, it, I think it's still on the new side of things. Um, but there are some communities that are starting to hop on this bandwagon. Cool. Thank you so much. Where my daughter lives, there's been city bike share for quite some time. But in the last just couple of years, the ratio of E to non-E has really been ramping up. It's pretty amazing how quickly it's changing. And just incidentally, there's two e-bikes back there, one in each office. And Amy's bike is out front. So honestly, like, and I walked. So like we're preaching like the, you know, two or cars place. Yeah. Any other questions for Amy? Grant? How would individuals qualify to rent or borrow these bikes? Are there are there any qualifications for individuals to do this? Yeah, so I, we're still kind of working out those pieces, um, but I think the intent is to make it available to community members. Um, obviously, we'd have to get their information and, and make sure that um, they're going to treat it with care. So we'd have to get some information from them. Um, but the intent is to make not put a lot of barriers so that people could use them and feel comfortable doing so. What if hypothetically five individuals choose to rent all your cargo bikes and not treat them with care? So I, I actually come from the car sharing world. So I do have a decent amount of experience with this. Um, I think there's gotta be rules in place and there's gotta be education. And then if people don't follow the policies, they don't get to use the, the tool. And then unfortunately, uh, I think the intent will be to make sure that we can continue to use them, but it will probably change policies uh, to a degree. If that makes any sense. It does, but if yeah. we're procuring these assets mm -hmm. and these assets cease to exist for some reason, mm -hmm. how would we replace those assets? We'd probably have to rely on grant funding. Okay. So uh, the, the intent would be to put all the restrictions in place that we can um, to ensure that that doesn't happen, which is one of the reasons I was playing with the idea of having a lending library that does not is not manned or does not have a staff person, but I don't think that is a, a feasible option at this time. Um, but I would love to get it to that point uh, where it is similar, more similar to a car sharing uh, system. Um, but we would have access to who is using the bus, or sorry, who is using the, um, the bikes, not the bus. Um, and be able to track and understand, you know, have a checkout process and a check-in process. And if people aren't treating with care, then they, they lose their ability to use it. Thanks, Amy. Yeah, thank you. And uh, help me think through the process. Shall we discuss this at mayor call? Is that a good timing? Sure. Make a note. Now we have a public hearing for an annexation. Uh, I'm going to read this script and then Kevin's going to interrupt me at the right moment, right? This is the time scheduled for the public hearing on the annexation by Stenberg Brothers, LLC, file number 2022-66. The applicant's parcel is located west of the intersection of Franklin Road and Carr Drive. The affected parcel currently is zoned urban low density residential, urban growth area UR1, and will be designated urban low density residential R1 following annexation. A quorum of the council is present. I will now ask all councilors to disclose any ex parte contacts, conflicts of interest, and bias in this matter. Uh, Megan. Um, I just want to let everyone know I am employed by Farmers Irrigation District. So I did um, see the pre-application and the application material um, prior to reading it for this night. Um, there was no information in there that wasn't included in the packet. 
Um, and um, farmers and myself, there's no financial in, impact from annexation. So um, I don't believe there's a conflict of interest. No, I thought you no. no. Um, I received a letter from a neighbor, uh, which I forwarded along to staff so that then everybody saw it. So I think that's not an ex parte contact to me. I resolved it. Other, other, uh, okay. uh, would anyone in the audience like to question any counselor on any disclosure, ex parte contact, bias, or conflict of interest, or otherwise challenge the participation of any member of council in this discussion? For audience members watching video conference in Zoom, please use the raise hand feature in the webinar controls if you wish to speak. For audience members listening by phone, please, please use the following commands via your phone's dial pad. Star nine, raise hand if you wish to speak. Star six, toggle mute and unmute. Checking the screens that I have. Anybody see anything I need to? Thank you, Jen. Would any counselor like to make a motion to disqualify any other counselor from hearing this application? Just for the record, Mayor, I don't have a conflict either. Thank you, Gladys. In tonight's hearing, we will use the following order of presentation. First, we will begin with a staff report in which staff will describe the application before us. Second, the applicants may present testimony. Third, anyone else in favor of the proposal may testify. Fourth, opponents to the proposal may testify. Five, if there is opponent testimony, the applicants then have an opportunity to present final rebuttal. The applicants have the last word because an applicant has the burden of proving compliance with the mandatory approval criteria. Six, after that, we will check to see if staff has any parting comments following the conclusion of all public testimony. Seven, and finally, after everyone interested in these matters have, have had a chance to testify, we will close the record, deliberate, and render a decision tonight. Here are some basic rules for presenting testimony in tonight's hearing. One, only present testimony in the order I just recited and do so only at the podium in front of the table unless you are watching or listening by Zoom. Two, begin with your name and mailing address. Three, please limit your testimony to the substantive issues and the principal approval standards in ORS 2222 and HRMC 17.15. Failure to raise an issue accompanied by statements or evidence with sufficient specificity specificity to allow us or the parties to respond to the issue will preclude an appeal to the city council or LUBA based on that issue. Failure by the applicant to raise constitutional or other issues related to proposed conditions of approval with sufficient specificity to allow us to respond to the issue will preclude an action for damages in circuit court. Finally, we may set time limits on the presentation of testimony tonight, although there is no limitation on written argument that may be submitted. Given the populace here tonight, I think we should be fine. Let's be respectful of, as my wife likes to say, strive to say just enough. May we have the staff report, please? Thank you, Mayor Blackburn and counselors. Uh, as the mayor explained, the application before you tonight is simply an annexation. Uh, the cover sheet and related ordinance 2076 are in tonight's packet number two. The applicants also submitted applications for a three parcel minor partition and a middle housing development for six townhouses on one of those parcels. The annexation, minor partition and middle housing development applications are being processed concurrently in accordance with procedures for quasi-judicial action. The city's annexation process requires the planning commission to forward recommendations to the city council and for the council to make the final decision on the annexation. The commission reviewed the applications in a public hearing on April 17th and approved the minor partition and the middle housing development uh, with a recommendation for approval of the annexation. Among other conditions, approval of the partition and middle housing development is contingent upon approval of and finalization of the annexation. The final order, which includes findings of fact and conditions of approval, was signed on May 4th. It's attached to ordinance number 2076 as exhibit B. You'll find that on page nine of tonight's council packet number two. Um, the mayor cited the applicable criteria already in the script, including chapter 1715 annexation policy. And we also look to state statute, ORS 222.111 through ORS 222.183, annexation of contiguous territory. In order, in order to qualify for annexation, property must be contiguous to the 
city limits. In this case, the annexation territory includes the applicant's 1.09 acre parcel, a segment of right-of-way for Frankton Road that's contiguous to the city limits along its eastern boundary, together totaling approximately 1.38 acres. Uh, as the mayor also mentioned, the annexation territory is located west of the intersection of Frankton Road and Carr Drive, which is south of May Street. A map of the annexation territory is attached to Ordinance 2076, found on page eight of tonight's council packet two. Also as noted earlier by Mayor Blackburn, the property currently is zoned urban low density residential in the urban growth area, and it will remain R1 following annexation. Property is to be withdrawn from the West Side Fire Protection District and remain in the Ice Fountain Water District as well for potable water service, as well as farmers irrigation district subject to uh, addressing requirements for water rights. In order to ensure consistency with city annexation policy and city development standards, conditions of approval require the applicant to execute a contractually binding annexation agreement before council approves the ordinance annexing the land that's subject to this request, that is prior to the second reading of the ordinance. The annexation agreement was prepared by the city attorney and a draft was provided to the applicant. The agreement explains requirements for right-of-way dedication and public and private improvements consistent with the findings and conditions of approval in the Planning Commission's decision. Again, the Planning Commission's approval of the partition and middle housing development is con uh, contingent upon completion of this annexation process. A summary of testimony that was presented to the Planning Commission by interested parties is included in the conclusion section of the Planning Commission's final order. That's found on pages 84 to 85 of packet number two. Uh, additional written comments were received late last week in response to the notice of tonight's hearing, and those were distributed to you this afternoon. Um, the applicant's representative, Austin Bell, is here with a brief presentation for you. And with that, are there any questions I can answer at this time? Um, the, the letter from Tim Meyer and the, the other people are part of the record, I assume. Is that yeah, true? Yes. Um, we've got two letters from Tim as well as from some other neighbors yep. that were in the Planning Commission's packet attached to the ordinance. And we'll add the new letter that just came in uh, to, the, to the record. Yes. And then second, simple question. To us, it's purely the annexation and, and it's not the, the development plan because that's, that's, that's on the, unless it gets appealed and then it comes back to us. Correct. Uh, the council is focused on the annexation. The uh, planning commission has approved the development application subject to approval of the annexation. Thank you. Uh, no, for the purposes of the appeal, uh, the appeal window has closed uh, on planning commission's recommendation on the development. So that appeal wouldn't come to you. The only appeal now would be Council's action on the annexation, its terms and agreement to loop up. Okay, following the script. Next, we have the applicant's testimony. Hello. Thank you all for being here and serving. It's uh, really important that people uh, participate as city councilmen and mayors because that's what makes cities work. So I appreciate that. And of course, coming out. <clears throat> so uh, really, everything Kevin has said, we're, we're good with. The, the idea here is that the Stenbergs, who are Hood River guys, you guys were born here, right? Born and raised here. So they're Hood River guys, not from out of state, and they have a piece of property that um, they wish to develop. And when it became apparent that uh, they needed city services, particularly for sewer, uh, it was required to annex into the city. Um, and then once that became available as we discussed the options. We got pretty excited about the middle housing. Uh, I worked with, with the Stenbergs on other projects. And one of the things we tried to do in another agency or another jurisdiction was kind of a, a tiny home development. City That city would like to have done it. They just didn't really have tool because you had to have these pretty big size lots for either townhouses or, you know, and so it just, it just didn't work. And so it's kind of exciting to see this middle housing come out about that same time. And so we've been looking at that. And um, so that we submitted all the documents, uh, uh, the preliminary plans for uh, street improvements, a new road court, uh, it's called uh, car court, which would serve the three lots for the partition. And then uh, initially 
one of those part partition lots would be uh, done into a new housing development for six units. And so um, that's, that's what the plan is. And uh, I'm Austin Bell, Bell Designer. I think I said that company, and we're providing engineering and surveying consulting on this. Thank you. Uh, questions for Austin? Thank you. All right. Okay. Next, we will have testimony from any proponents, folks in favor of this. Anybody online? Anybody in the audience? People move through. Uh, again, for audience members watching video conference, please use the raise hand feature in Zoom webinar controls if you wish to speak. For audience members listening by phone, please use the following commands via your phone's dial pad. Star nine was to raise hand. Star six is to toggle mute and unmute. Uh, next, we will have any testimony that you would consider neutral. Does anybody want to speak to this, but neither in favor nor against? Seeing none, any opposed to this who would like to testify? Seeing none, the applicant's rebuttal is moot. Staff recap, is there anything else you guys wanted to add? No, Mayor, we're here for your deliberation. If you have questions, uh, once you close the record, we're here to, to support any discussion that you may have. Great, thank you. So at this time, I will close the hearing and uh, we will deliberate. We are now deliberating. Who wants to kick it off? Megan. I think a question for staff, and I'm not sure if this was actually about the development or the annexation, but um, County Public Works had submitted a comment about um, not just doing a half street, but doing the full street improvements. And I might have missed it in the 300 pages, but um, that wasn't actually being proposed or that wasn't what was approved. Can you touch on the reasoning or, or sure. um, the rules around that? <clears throat> Thank you, Councillor Saunders. The, um, yes. County Public Works and Engineering did submit written testimony and uh, did recommend a full street improvement along this property's uh, Franklin Road frontage. Um, I believe the intent uh, is to um, make sure that at such time that the road is turned over from the county to the city's jurisdiction, there's no question from the city uh, about accepting it because it would have been improved to meet city standards. That said, uh, the city's engineering department reviewed the application. The recommendation was just for a half street improvement. So from the current center line to the west, uh, that's where we look to uh, see a right-of-way dedication and improvement. We're not asking the, uh, the applicant actually to improve the road all the way to the east side of the right-of-way. Thank you. I guess, um, you know, this is exactly our plan for annexation is to when, when development comes in, we do it. Uh, so to me, that's, that's not um, an issue at all. I think that that's good. Um, I did read through the whole, and I know I'm, I'm fudging the thing, but uh, I'm using the opportunity to say that I agree that parking on Franklin on that hill is sort of a bad thing. So hopefully, I did, hopefully that that's, that's not a thing. Um, and then you guys can make sure that that, that isn't a thing for your residents. So, um, but uh, annexation wise, I'm, I'm down with it, so. Yeah, I'll just, I'll add that I'm sympathetic sort of to the concerns about Frankton. It seems like that'd be dangerous for people to even be crossing there, et cetera. However, you know, within the code and, and what middle housing says, I think it's above board. Um, I also see that the setbacks were changed from six to 10 feet. Um, there was some question as to which trees. So I hope the, that'll be taken into consideration as well. Um, but yeah, generally in favor of uh, middle housing and why it's in the code and why we chose to do it. Um, I do live close to where the, one of the more recent uh, middle housing developments is on Hull. So they poured concrete. And my thoughts are that it, it, it will be a little bit difficult to expect that those people won't have visitors, et cetera, because all the parking will be taken up. So I, I'm, I'm definitely sympathetic to that. And I think it, in the site designed for it to be a livable place, it, it should be considered. So not as a necessarily a condition of approval, so to speak. I guess in the context of the annexation, 
I don't see a, any reason to not approve it. You know, the rest of it, I assume, will be taken care of through by the city standard and all of the conditions that they placed. Um, the, the rest of it. I met Johnny come lately in the middle housing. I was not here when y'all passed that code, and I was at a neighborhood meeting with Mark, and I heard Mark urging a builder, please use that code. And so when this came in, I was like, here we go. We're using this code. I'm really excited that it worked out for your project. It's, it is one of the larger, sooner ones, so there will be some growing pains, but this is what we as council have prioritized. I'm really excited to see it happening. I wish y'all that. Thanks. Um, yeah, deliberation wise, I mean, I think this application meets the annexation criteria. Um, I don't see any reason we wouldn't approve the annexation. Um, I, I don't think this is part of annexation, but I do um, also think, yeah, parking on that hill at Frankton seems like a potential safety concern. So just flagging for the future. But um, yeah, this particular at this time, and since we're not reviewing the actual um, you know, middle housing or anything. And I agree, I, I approved middle housing as a code. And so I think it's, they're well within their rights and um, we'll see, I'm excited to see how it looks. Before I forget, thank you, Planning Commission. I mean, that was a big packet to read, I can imagine to write and to, and to deliberate. So thanks to more city, city volunteers, as you say. Uh, at, at some point, I would entertain a motion. Uh, I don't want to rush anybody through. Anybody have any other comments or questions? No comments. I mean, no no concerns for me. Uh, the application meets criteria. Excited to see builders use, uh, utilizing the middle housing code. Um, yeah, let's let's do it. Excited to see how this goes. I move that the subject property is annexed into the city and withdrawn from the West Side Rural Fire Protection district consistent with the planning commission's recommendation and that would reordinance number 2076 for the first time by title only i will second <laughs> sorry gladys <laughs> not so excited uh any further uh any further discussion i just want to thank staff for 300 and some pages of report <laughs> and uh for helping move move this stuff forward and for you guys this is, this is an early one, so make it successful and so then we don't get beat up, okay? I, I thought this might take a lot longer, so given that it wasn't as much longer, I, I'll ask a question that's a little tiny bit related. We've worked so hard on what I call the orange rind problem, where there are many, pro many properties that are not annexed but have our sewer. Does this fix any, do we get any, uh, additional co corollary benefits of other properties that this will cause to be annexable? There was no additional properties that came in with this. The only property in the triple majority is property exclusively owned. Uh, however, if you were looking at it a more kind of global strategic way, uh, it is now contiguous to the Stonegate subdivision. So the city has now is directly touching Stonegate and has um, you know, starting to create enclaves and circles where that becomes increasingly accessible. Um, so there, there is things to consider there when it comes to Stonegate. So no new property came in. However, strategically, um, you see, you see the city starting to grow closer and closer to the urban growth limits. Thank you. Uh, I'll call the question. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Chair votes aye. Motion passed. All right. Onward. Next, we have the consent agenda. I would entertain a motion. I will move we approve the consent agenda. I'll second. Second by Rivera. You've got to use the Zoom pipes a little bit. Uh, any, any discussion? Uh, Chief Damien uh, presented at the Budget Committee the exciting information about the grant. So uh, I don't know if anybody needs to hear more about that, but uh, uh, no further discussion. All in favor of the consent agenda. Aye. Aye. Yes. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Chair votes aye. Motion passed. Any action items? Abigail? We have none tonight. Jackie, talk to us about land acknowledgement. Thank you.
Okay. All right, so um, just a little bit of background information as is in your packet. Um, the city has been reciting a land acknowledgement at the beginning of city council meetings since about 2019. Um, and there, to date, there has been no formal process as to the writing of this land acknowledgement. Um, and what I'm proposing is that we form a small working group um, comprising of a couple of city council members, as well as some staff to work together to um, take a step back and have a little bit more intent and purpose, um, as well as the process of actually conducting the research um, and, you know, into this area, as well as in what other organizations are doing um, and be able to draw some meaning as well from that process. Um, some of the things, let's see. I can figure this out. Um, some of the things the working group can cons consider are what are some components of meaningful land acknowledgements. Um, things like uh, being specific to the place. Indigenous people are not a monolith. Um, so let's be you know, really intentional about who we're talking about and what issues we're talking about. Um, that it's well researched, um, it's accurate, um, as well as we, we learn the proper pronunciations of names. Um, and it also acknowledges the ongoing legacy of colonialism, doesn't put indigenous people in the past. Um, and that, you know, we also allow it to be a living document that we can learn from and grow with um, as we learn and grow as an organization. Um, another thing to consider is that um, land acknowledgements have become really commonplace. Um, but with that, there are as well as some criticisms, that they're simply words, um, that they're, so one thing to consider for this group as well is how can we make this beyond words? Um, what are some calls to action that the city could potentially engage with? Um, so some of these ways are really concrete. Um, if you look at the Columbia River Gorge Commission, they take a moment after their land acknowledgement to open the floor. Um, uh, for uh, native speakers. Um, they also practice a word of the day. Um, I've seen a lot of other organizations highlight native led organizations and efforts and have a call for fundraising or different support. Um, it could be an opportunity to share information that we know about local efforts. Uh, and then it gets a little bit less concrete so we can think a little bit more holistically is how we work as an organization of respecting tribal sovereignty, building government to government relationships um, and committing to ongoing meaningful relationship. Um, and so with that being said, unless anyone, do you guys have any questions? <laughs> thank you, Jackie. Any questions for Jackie? Yeah, I do. Uh, Jackie, thank you for that. I, I agree with a lot of the points that you said. Um, I'd be happy to participate in something like this, but I would also welcome or encourage us to reach out to folks from Critfic or folks from the next door that are Native American and would have some great feedback to guide us in order uh, to do this work. We can't uh, assume that we know all these things, so it's really important to pull in people that are Native American and receive their input to guide us. Absolutely. Thank you, Gladys. I agree. And I will say uh, there is a $50 restaurant gift certificate to a non-white participant on this committee if we can get someone recruited. And last week, I drove up to the Warm Springs Reservation to speak to former tribal counselor Karina Miller, who's also the chair of the Gorge Commission. And we had a very nice lunch in the casino. And she, uh, I'm just going to read what she said to me because I think it was a great day for the city. Uh, stand by. She said, thanks for making, I said, uh, thanks again for fitting me in. It was so interesting and fun talking to you onward. And she said, thanks for making the trip and striving to include communities traditionally excluded. I really appreciate it and hope you had a great drive and a great day. So, I mean, I don't know, but one day I knelt in front of the salmon statue. That seemed like a good thing. This seemed like a good thing. I'm excited for this to yield what it can yield. Yeah. 
So we would take volunteers right now or certainly don't feel on the spot. We can follow on, Tim. Great, so Tim's volunteered to serve on the committee. Thank you. Jackie, will you be on the committee? I will, yes. Great, okay. And uh, Gla so Gladys and, and others out yes. outreach. Yeah, I'd be more than happy to. And then at the, the other point that I forgot to make was, you know, I think this also speaks to our resolution that we're going to continue learning and we're going to continue being inclusive of those that have been marginalized. So uh, again, Jackie, thank you for bringing this to our attention and I'd be more than happy to support and help in any way. Thanks, Gladys. Thank you. Thank you. Any, anything else on this topic? I think a real basic question that we have to think about is who are we doing this for and why? And I think that that should probably be the starting point for discussion. Thank you, Tim. Absolutely. For anyone who's a little bit interested, uh, online it's easy to listen to the uh, Gorge Commission meetings. They're public meetings like this, so you just click through the website a few times. They have a crackerjack, really interesting land acknowledgement, including things like we celebrate and encourage ongoing government to government and person to person interactions. Like that just seems like that is like some of the right stuff. So uh, I, I commend that to you if, if you want to pick them up. Uh, great, anything else on this topic? I agree with Tim. I think that's a great starting question. Um, make sure we're doing this with the right intentions. And, and you know, just, Sort of repeating, you know, we we always talk about walking the talk, and and, and this is a, a step in that direction. And the challenge is not just walking to walk the talk. That, uh, that so it, it's it's tricky. I, I think that the kind, you know, both Gladys and Tim are they'll be great additions from the from the council side. So now we encourage us to be. Uh, firm with ourselves, but gentle on ourselves. I, I started doing land acknowledgements. I had heard about them happening at uh, gatherings in Canada, I think first maybe at big city councils up there. I was like, what's that? And I learned about that. And I started doing them like, I don't know what to say. And start. And then since then, for me personally, like the art, somebody mentioned, like some places have stopped doing it. I'm like, what the hell is this for? And so we're just figuring it out and good job us and, and let's figure it out. And I would add to some of these points that figuring out that process um, and how we actually want to create the land acknowledgement will be part of what the working group does, not simply sitting down and just writing. Great. Thanks again, Jack. Uh, city recorder, Jack. Your Honor, I would like to entertain a motion for the first uh, reading of Ordinance 2076 by title only. So I think this last time we felt a little pushy, but I would just have to check this out. We do have seven of us. Is this just like before rushing or like, I don't know. Is the annexation agreement signed? No. We, no. Yeah. And we don't want to do a second reading. Yeah. Yeah. Great, thank you. Thanks, that's why I have uh, I would entertain a motion. I would move we read Ordinance 2076, the Stenberg annexation for the first time by title only. Second. Second by committee. Uh, I second. Roll call. Councillor Zanmiller? Yes. Councillor Stapina? Aye. Councillor Colson? Yes. Councillor Saunders? Yes. Councillor Rivera? Yes. Councilor Cunahan? Aye. Your Honor. Aye. Ordinance 2076, an ordinance proclaiming annexation of certain contiguous territory located with this, within the city's urban growth boundary and withdrawing from the same territory from the West Side Rural Fire Protection District, Sinberg Bro Bros Brothers LLC. 2076 has passed its first reading. We'll have the second reading in two weeks. Uh, June 12th. June 12th. Mm -hmm. um, your comments. Yes, thank you. Um, first is that we are almost to June, and uh, the first Friday of June will be uh, the Visit Hood River First Friday. Uh, the, the Pride, the theme this time will be Pride. Uh, so that's June 2nd. I'm hoping that the city can have a booth like we did last year, and that uh, at least one or two of the um, council members will be willing to join us. I think it's going to be fun. And I think that uh, Jackie has passed around uh, signups for all of the 
all of the first Fridays, if you have a chance to join us for that. So that's Friday, June 2nd. Saturday, June 3rd, we'll be doing a community cleanup with Solve. Um, I think I think Mayor has- See if I can just interrupt, sorry. Yep. Uh, Visit Hood River has invited me to MC the June 2nd Pride something, something. I honestly- It's a, there's a parade. It's a, I'd say, almost say a march. It's a parade, no floats or other vehicles. So th that's what I think she said was MC. I have been in the Grand Marshal once, but anyway, so if anybody hears anything, I'd love to hear from Katie. I, I was a witness, <laughs> she asked you to MC. What's that? I was a witness and she asked you to MC. Okay. What that means, I don't know, but, Great. but I hope that everyone can be there and, uh, and the city will have a booth, so stop by. So June 3rd, sorry. That's June 2nd, June 3rd, community cleanup. So you can spend the whole weekend with us. Uh, and I, my thanks to Jackie, who has organized this with Solve. Uh, I think we'll be focusing on Cascade Avenue on the West End there. Um, really trying to spruce up part of town as the summer begins. So excited for that. All the supplies will be available. Um, just uh, show up. And I think we're, we can accommodate folks of most ages, right? If families want to come together and, and uh, you know, serve their community, that'll be great. I was going to ask that. Like, yeah. I, can I bring my kids? Mm -hmm. Jackie, Jackie, you want to come up to the microphone and give us a couple more details? Um, yes, Myers are welcome um, with a, a grown up. Yeah. Great, thanks. Uh, and the end of the that's the third. That's on the third, yeah. Okay. Um, and, and we will be providing um, supplies, but I encourage people to have good like gloves that are not disposable so we can reduce creating waste while we're trying to pick it up. Yeah. Thank you. That's right. And then the last thing, I, if you, if I can have a couple minutes of your time, I want to talk just a little bit about next steps for the uh, potential West Side Urban Renewal District. Tomorrow at 6 p.m. we'll have our virtual open house. My understanding is we have more than 30, 35 people, 38 people already signed up to attend. Uh, so that we're super excited about that. Um, you are aware that we've been looking at what would it look like if the district was a little bit smaller. The first time we talked to you it was 445 acres. We've now done an analysis with, I think, 407 acres. So we'll be sharing that information tomorrow. It's really an informational uh, open house, um, a chance for people to ask questions. We're not looking for a ton of comments there because uh, starting, I think, the next day, um, the video and all the handouts will be available, and then there'll be a survey for folks to answer. So I think the survey will be available in English and Spanish um, <clears throat> for, I think, the next week or two. Um, so that's tomorrow, 6 p.m., then uh, we'll come back to you on June 12th with kind of the findings of that. Once we've got those public comments, other conversations that we're having, we'll come to you with a, um, a draft plan or at least that project list, assuming that you uh, are generally good with that based on your feedback. Uh, then our consultant, Elaine Howard, will write the plan and we'll make that available to the taxing districts. They all get 45 days to comment. Uh, most of them, except for the county, do not have veto power, but they do get an opportunity for comments, and we want to make sure that you get to review those. So uh, then in July, we'll just do a check-in at your meeting. We'll also do a presentation to the county in July, and then in August, we'll be looking for a decision, uh, both by you and the county. So there'll be touches kind of every month this summer um, with the goal, if things progress as we expect, uh, that um, you would, you and the county would approve by August, and then we need 30 days because it's not an emergency right, for it to take effect. And we need to have it finished by September 30th if we want to freeze tax um, property rates this year. If not, you know, then we've got another year to wait. Abigail, are we doing anything proactive to incorporate non traditional input for that survey? Thank you. Uh, the open house will be available in English and in Spanish, uh, and the survey will be. Um, we have, I think at a future date, not at this early stage, but I think when we start talking about specific projects, we are looking to do some um, open houses or some focus groups with folks who um, are possibly at risk of being displaced from the area or are in uh, mobile home parks or other affordable housing that we want to make sure um, that we're very careful about as the, as the district progresses. Super. Thank you very mm -hmm. much. I think it's so important because some input we get automatically. Other input, not so much. Absolutely. And I think, as you're aware, uh, and we'll talk about tomorrow, uh, as we've been going through this West Side process, we've really tried to center equity um, in the process, and, and we hope to center it in the plan. Who benefits, who is harmed, what are the implications of, of the decisions that you make? Thank you. Committee reports. Doug, anything? 
Yes. So, uh, yeah, we had a uh, Visit Hood River board meeting on May 17th. A couple things. One thing that was noted was the, the Pride celebration on June 2nd. So thank you, Abigail, for bringing that up. And thank you, Mayor Blackburn, for emceeing. Um, we also mentioned, uh, if, uh, probably of note now uh, to, to mention, the July 7th one will be public service. So fire, police, sheriff, crag rats, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So some pretty good themes. Um, Cider Fest uh, was sold out by 1 p.m. with 3,500 attendees down at the Waterfront Park. Wow. Um, and I think, you know, concern in the past was that Waterfront uh, events take away, you know, downtown business, et cetera. Downtown was happening that day. So um, pretty good feedback from that first test of moving mm -hmm. that event down there and uh, could other events like Hops Fest, et cetera, also utilize that space. Um, also, uh, VHR is moving to Mall 202, so they'll be close by and have a little bit more of a uh, public uh, uh, presence downtown, a little bit more visual uh, for people to be able to have some walk-in traffic for them. So that was good. Um, lodging was about the same as, as pre-COVID. Um, bit of decrease in some areas, possibly because of inflation or, um, you know, the weather, but bookings definitely for a summer season are, are high. <laughs> so, um, yeah, um, I think that's good. For that sure. Yep. Yeah, this afternoon I had a brief meeting with uh, the building subcommittee of the Energy Council and where they went through some priority projects. One of which is trying to outreach to underserved communities about opportunities for weatherization. <clears throat> and I suggested that we might be able to help distribute that information via our social media and other locations. Well, uh, by State Working Group, we met with the, let's see, when was that last week? Last Monday. Yeah, yeah, time still relative. Um, the county is going to be working on getting nominations and uh, applicants to be the the, the board, uh, for lack of a better term, of the new agency that we've all agreed to form you know, with the purpose of creating and building uh, said bridge. Um, the so the current group is not necessarily making any more or additional changes or um uh making decisions before that new body convenes in july so. any vibe about how the oregon legislative antics impact our chance of winning no but we hope uh we're still smilingly optimistic Okay, thank you. Uh, Gladys. No updates from me. My CAC uh, meets tomorrow. So at the next meeting, I'll have an update for all of you. Uh, the mayor has a few comments. Let's start with the uh, CAT application before I forget. Uh, you know, it's in the, the budget committee's met. What, what's, what's our pleasure? It's absolutely up to us. We got one thumb, we got two thumbs. I'm in favor. We got a majority in favor. Do we need to vote or? No, we don't need to vote. You already have the funds allocated in the budget. So we will uh, wait until we hear if they get the grant and you need them. But I do think there's a letter of support. Yeah, the letter. Yep. So I can work with uh, with Amy and we'll put together a letter of support for the mayor's signature. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, next is the uh, ODOT Region 1 Act. So. Please correct me if I'm wrong. I believe what happens is the county commission appoints right. the, the representative, which has been granted. Um, we, they, they have asked us mm -hmm. if we have a suggestion. Um, that's that, that, that's that, correct. That, that's, yep. that's and I would note that Councillor Polson has been filling the remainder of uh, Councillor e, uh, Eric Heaney's term. That's why. Uh, that you've got six, he's been doing it for six months. Sorry, talked about in, in the first year, but 
been doing it for six months and why uh, the county is requesting a, a, an official appointment now. Um, and now that I've said that, the next one uh, is relevant to this, so hold that thought. Next is the Bridge Authority uh, recommending an appointment for county consideration, the same situation. The county appoints, but they've asked us if we have a suggestion. Uh, Grant and I have been serving on that committee and Grant and I have talked offline and Grant would be willing to serve as our suggestion to the county to be appointed to the Bridge Commission. Yeah, that's why I had questions answered, so. So, uh, We, we, we get to decide who we, who we will recommend. Would anybody like to uh, recommend that we recommend a grant? Grant, you, you want to do the bridge. Do you want to do both? That seems a lot. Uh, the ODOT Region 1 Act is not that much time. Um, not that much of a time commitment or meeting commitment. They have quarterly meetings. Um, a, a lot of uh, their meetings are also on Zoom. So they're not even necessarily even in person. So um, if I am nominated to do Region 1 Act as well, then that would not be a problem for me. Well, we will need a, I mean, at some point, a nickname like Mr. Not New Eric. Eric or something. Not New Eric. Not New Eric. That's right. We've already evolved from that. You shouldn't even have brought it up. That's right. Big House Paul. That's right. I know. This is, <laughs> this is how these things happen. Um, for anybody who wasn't at uh, Senator Wyden's uh, uh, town hall, that's where this silly nickname thing started. Um, so it sounds like he's willing to do both. Would somebody like to make a I nominate Grant for both of those? Move, move by Cunahan. Thank you, Grant. I'll second. Thanked and seconded by Saunders. Uh, truly, I mean, Grant, these are important, big money projects that Having a, having a solid city representation there is, truly is beneficial to our residents, so thank you. Yeah, I'm aware, and the bridge is going to be a lot of work, especially over the next six months in formation of the entity and the creation of the charter of founding documents, guidelines, principles, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, I'm, I'm aware. Does, does Grant slash council want to have a, a backup? I mean, do we want to have a, is that useful? That'd be nice. Uh, I, I believe that the county is also taking nominations on their own uh, as open alternates. So they, they may have alternates um, or appoint alternates alternatively anyway. But they, they've asked. So if we had an idea for an alternate, that would, I don't think that would uh, lessen Grant's chances of getting it. I think that would be, that would be all for the good if we had an additional person. I think since Paul, since you've been on that, and are familiar with it, I think it would be logical. That'd be, I'd, it'd be great to flip-flop from being the main to being the alternate. I'd be, I'd be happy to be the suggested alternate. Then I'll second what I think was a appointment request. Second <laughs> to have me be the, the alternate. For the bridge. For the bridge. Uh, why not? Let's vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Yes. That's what's going to happen. So can we send the right letter to the right person? Yep, yep. I'll send an email to Heidi to Hart tomorrow. I think that the county's going to, in their June meeting, actually do the deciding. So it'll be interesting to see how that goes. I, I, I believe that the other uh, south, south side of the river folks will be uh, Mike Fox from the port and Arthur Babbitts from the, from the county. So it's, it's essentially, we're, we're, we're all voting for continuity on this. Uh, great. So those are the only, no, uh, I, I think you guys got an opportunity to give input. Is Dan on the call? Oh, I'm supposed to be looking at my thing, but my battery died. Um, we're, we're beginning the process of providing some evaluation input to Dan because that's a good idea. Um, so I think you guys got that, but I think I didn't get any back. So if you could give me some input, that would be great. Um, but maybe I missed an email in the last two days. It, you're talking about the form to use, not the input. Uh, you got the form yeah. in order to give me your answers. Okay. Is that is that confusing? Not anymore, no, no. I, I might have also thought we were looking at the form. Yeah, that's how I interpreted it. Is this the form we should use? That's what I thought. 
I, I think I already decided this is the form. Okay. Right. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for clarifying. Then Appreciate you can it. expect it in short no, order. <laughs> I, I'm, waiting for, I'm waiting for input. And Dan, I mean, is this, is this okay with you? Yes. Per perfect. Have yes. You, the, 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 there are a lot of different forms you can use. Um, so whatever form provides or elicits the most useful thought and input will help me do a better job and help the city going forward. Thank you. And then actually I'll be asking, Abigail and I'll be asking you to make sure that we like open session, executive session, your, your choice, you'll help us figure that out. This would be like a legal a city attorney test, right? Exactly. <laughs> okay, sure. All right, I'll help you not mess up. If that's think, let the record show. Uh, okay, that's that's all the mayor comments. Uh, council comments, Gladys. Yeah, I did have the opportunity to join uh, Nubia this last Saturday. That was fun to get on the radio and just chat. Uh, something that she did ask me that I just want to bring up to all of you, because I'm certain you may hear about it, is... Uh, Mayor, you helped set up the Latino Advisory Council um, a couple years ago when you were mayor a couple years back, and that's something that was brought up uh, in discussion again, if you plan to bring that back and have individuals from a variety of organizations that would have that direct pipeline to you. Um, and so I'm happy to help support if that's something that, that we all decided to, to reinstate. Um, I know that we had maybe two meetings with uh, Mayor McBride and then, um, and then we, those, those meetings kind of uh, came to a close. So that is something that was discussed and asked. Uh, and again, I'd be happy to, to support you in those efforts if that's something that we all felt would be beneficial. That's just what I wanna do. I wanna get it going again and I want you to help me make it great. I'd be more than happy to. Thanks, Gladys. Anything else? No, sir, that's it. Grant. going on um do we have to don't did we get this as a request the drive -through? right thank you yes that's how i took it i think you mentioned the permanent fees are about six hundred dollars um, mostly because it's a sunday and public works overtime is involved so i was actually talking about this as we got just want to share with you guys so like when juneteenth says hey can we use jackson park there's maybe an incremental use, like the trash gets a little fuller or something. This is, we're paying staff overtime on Sunday to set up the barricade. So this is like a hard cost, which is different. I think a little bit different. So I, I don't know the answer, but that I just wanted to emphasize it is a little different. I, I had a question about this, which is, does, does us being a co-sponsor add some liability or other requirements on us that wouldn't be there if we don't. I look at the city recorder, it looks like she's going to answer. So they do have to require um, to submit insurance and they name the city on it. And then our public works crew, they're there ensuring that the closure is done correctly. That's why they're gonna be, sometimes we let them set it up, like put the barricades on the side. Robin was like, I don't feel comfortable with this, where they're located at. So um, I think we're covered with their insurance if something mm -hmm. were to happen, but um, they're going to be on site to make sure hopefully everything's safe and, and then they'll reopen it as well. So does that answer your question? Yeah. A couple of years ago, it was kind of more complicated. Peter was on council and there was definitely a little bit of like push pull, like wait a minute, this should be like a city project, this Streets Alive thing. Why is the organizing committee expected to chip in money or like, hey, it should be the city. We're, we the volunteers are just sort of helping the city. This is feeling a little more external to us. Uh, I, again, I don't have a strong preference about how that goes, but this is uh, an, a, an evolving question. I have a proposal. Bring it. Um, do we, do we, offer them a donation of like $300 and we ask for a table where we talk about safe routes to school 
as part of on the route wherever wherever we so choose to do it. Cool idea. Uh, one thought I'm having is there is a school district employee who's a self state throughout the school advocate with a capital A. Is that who we would want repping us or the city different from Megan, Ramey, or? I'm, I'm happy to, since I'll be doing something June 2nd and June 3rd to just make the trifecta and sit at a table if there's city people on the floor. I don't think that my sense, I'm trying to remember what he talked, he talked about a few tables that will be there. Doesn't seem like that's gonna be a hard ask to, to get a table. So we'll give, give, give them half price and uh, get a table is the, is, is the suggestion. Anybody wanna? Yeah, I just have a question for um, Dan. Um, does this event, uh, is this event structurally significantly different from other fee waiver requests? Um, because as, as mentioned, this is actual overtime, actual big free closures and other things. It's not necessarily just picking up a additional trash can after people have left. It's kind of, it is, you could call it incrementally different or a slippery slope, but it is more of an investment of public funds, which just makes it more of a significant decision for you as to whether you want city funds to go to this sort of purpose. It always helps if you've got, um, when this becomes more of a, a common occurrence and a big thing, I've seen cities formalize this by setting up like a grant program, you know, budget item line item that you can say we want to embrace or endorse this activity as a, a city thing politically and so we're going to award x dollars from this fund to this cause um, <clears throat> so you should think about that but as this is set up it's it's think of it in terms of money in terms of budget um you know it's always good as as mark suggested to kind of you know you have you have a message in a lot of these things you in, at least endorse some of the messaging and if you could you know advance your own particular message by getting a table then there's that's something more tangible the city would get out of such an investment but you know just be aware of the money part of this it's a budget thing primarily thanks dan sure yeah my my question was more in relation to the slippery slope thing like is is there a difference would there be a legal difference in between one type of event or another based on size, scope, et cetera? It becomes an issue when you start to deny these proposals right. or with, withhold your support. <clears throat> and the allegation will always be is because you don't like our message. Right, right. And so that's why having a formal grant program helps you say, well, the, you know, we endorse these sorts of messages with this line item budget contribution. Yeah. Does it does the fact that this project is sort of in alignment with the city goal, does that give us any cover, Dan? It's much, yes, it, it justifies the expenditure more. Because when you contribute money, public funds, the public has to get some benefit from it. And so you have to be cognizant of what are you getting for your money. That's why you know, look at the budget side of this, think of it as you know, public funds type issue. And right now you don't have any first amendment issues. Hopefully you never will, but that's where it is right now as I see it. Thank you, Dan. Would somebody like to make a suggestion? Like we got, can we get a majority for the Mark, the Mark plan? The Mark's through it, yeah. Everybody okay with Mark's plan? We're gonna call that what we decided. Yeah, all right. Great. That Thank sounds you. great. Thank you for that. Uh, we do not have an executive session. I apologize. I put that on the on the agenda and oh sorry. Yep. Keep going. So I got a little bit more around grant because grant brought up thing I was concerned. So council called grant is where we were. Thank you. Anything else, Grant? I suppose. Come on. Um so the reason why I was a little bit more hesitant last time regarding time commitments and whatnot in the indefinite future is that on or around Halloween of this year, um, I am going to have a new being that is going to be 
around. Um, so that's that's the plan. That's what's going on. So I'll be um, busy. Congrats. So excited I didn't blab it. <laughs> <laughs> well, now everyone knows. So yeah, yeah. Go ahead, Mark. Uh, I. I Thank, thanks to everyone that did budget committee this year. I made it to one of the three and it was, it was pretty good. Um, Grant for being chair again, that was efficient and um, staff for doing all the work to get ready for it and on we go. So thanks. Megan. Um, well, thanks for the snacks at three meetings, even if you weren't there. Um, but yeah, real quick, I went to the county or I listened to the county meeting last, last week. Um, and just two things, and uh, um, there were some questions about West Side Urban Renewal. Um, so thank you, Abigail, for updating us on our timeline and process. Um, and I did talk to her a bit about making sure she's um, giving them what they need. Um, and then that uh, DLCD advisory committee that I had applied for and didn't get, um, Jennifer Ewer has been appointed. Um, so I think if there's any comments from our community, we can go bug her about it. Um, so I want to make sure you all know that. Um, I think that's it. Tim. I, I guess I'll just mention Peter's second chair. He's scotch for me. Thank you. Yes. <clears throat> so I don't know whether that's actually on our property. But, you know, if there are invasive. Go ahead. Oh, it's, knowing scotch broom, it's on everyone's property. <laughs> but scotch broom is really, is really bad. You know, and, and in general, if there's invasive plants and proper property that we own, we should probably think of taking it. Scotch broom is particularly snicky. Jackie, is there any way you could see if Solve would bite on this? Like, thanks for coming. Can we have another project? Seeds, the seeds of thank you. Seeds of Scotch Brown Viral. Sweet. I couldn't hear any comment Jackie made if she made a comment. Sorry, sorry, Gladys. Thank you. I was just clarifying that for solve. Um, led that yes they do um they sponsor invasive species and um also restoration efforts but i was just clarifying that they don't actually come and lead the events um they sponsor through resources um and then we recruit the volunteers so we do the work thanks if, if we're able to organize this through solve or whatnot and we choose to Get the, uh, the scotch broom out of the ground. We'll need to have the tools to pull it out entirely by the roots. Can't just mow it, can't just cut it. Otherwise it'll come back. Um, what I found works great are weed wrenches, giant pieces of metal, which act as giant levers to pull the entire thing out by roots. Mm. Um, you got some? If I have one mm. that I use, yes. All coming together. Uh -huh, nah. um, so whatever we choose to do, I'd want to recommend that we make sure that we get the entire plant and not just a little bit. Super fun activity. Yeah, super fun. Can get off. High school people involved. It's possible. And off, so this, often. This was often my old job uh, with the Soil and Water Conservation District. And I know Jackie's already working with them for Puncture Vine, but they might be a great resource for this conversation as well. And not everything has to be a bake sale. Like, can our staff fit this in? Or is this a public works function? I've made a note to check in with our public works director about the concerns raised today. Scotch broom is a laborious and very time consuming practice. So if we're going to allocate time for that, so be mindful of choosing to do that with public works. Tim, anything else? Doug. I thank the council for all of their knowledge on Scotch broom. I'm terrified of it now. Uh, also wanted to, yeah, also wanted to acknowledge uh, the work of the budget committee. Thank you for the committee members for being willing to serve. We're a little short on the committee. So if anybody's watching this, it's always time to step up for next year. Um, 
just a quick comment. I've continued to hear from members in the community about uh, the use of, or the desire to use Lyft and Uber. I will just say that I, I thank Abigail for looking into this and uh, it's gonna be difficult to get a hold of anybody at these places. So I hope we don't have to get to the point where we have to start lobbying these corporations for um, uh, free money. But uh, continue to keep hearing about this in the discourse and uh, just thanks to Abigail for keeping on it. Um, Progress. <laughs> Thanks. I actually I have an update. I heard from two other cities who have successfully uh, updated their code and have uh, now have Uber, Uber, not Lyft, but Uber in their community. So I just got those emails today at three o'clock. So really looking forward to connecting with them. Fantastic. Thank you. I don't know if it's relevant, but it kind of seems similar to me. We do have like a tiny amount of DoorDash here. So I don't know. If Correct. A useful corollary to as we're figuring this out. Anything else for the good of the order? I hear no. Correct. No executive session. We were trying to, but it didn't come together. All right. We are adjourned. Thank you. Good night.